My Thoughts Monday is brought to you by Kinetic Performance, the makers of the Rolls Royce of barbell monitoring technology, the Gym Aware. Guys, in season training, we rock the Gym Aware all the time for quite a few reasons. The first, of course, is just that the ding. Every time the athlete hears that, they know that they're hitting exactly what we need from them at that moment. And when they don't hear it, it brings out that extra little bit of competitiveness within themselves. On top of that, that awesome ding ends out bringing together the athletes as well, pushing each other and getting each other to be able to hit numbers that they probably wouldn't hit at that portion of the year. And finally, of course, that ding helps us monitor, manipulate, and keep track of volumes and intensities so we can best dose our athletes during the season at the right time with the right amount. Guys, hop over to kinetic.com.au and check out what Evan and the team down there have because this is absolutely a sensational product that's changed the way that we've trained our athletes. This edition of My Thoughts Monday is brought to you by Valve Performance, the team behind the Nordboard, Force Dex, the Groin Bar, and Human Track. Guys, the most important ability for all of our athletes is availability, and that's the absolute goal of Valve Performance, is to provide solutions to performance professionals so that we can get the right information to make the right decision at the right time for the betterment of the athletes that we get to work with. To do this, guys, they have a wide range of validated products that focus on usability and having been founded by the School of Exercise and Nutrition Sciences at the Queensland University of Technology, they're extremely evidence-based and they're beyond transparent. I can tell you that our time using the Nordboard and being involved with Force Dex, we have been introduced to so many amazing people that have truly helped us become better coaches, have a better understanding, not just of the technology, but also what we're doing with our athletes. So make sure you hop over to ValPerformance.com today to make sure you check out what they got. It's going to make you better and to do better by your athletes. Hey, everybody. If you enjoy the podcast and the content that it provides, make sure you hop over and check out the all-new Strength Coach Network. The Strength Coach Network is a combination of the CVA SPS community and the Rugby Strength Coach community, bringing you what is sure to be the Internet's leading resource for continuing education for strength and conditioning professionals. Combining these two resources has allowed us to bring some of the best content from some of the best minds in the world together for your one-stop shop to better improve the continuing education for not just yourself, but your entire staff. Bringing together all of the lectures from the Rugby Strength Coach community, along with the lectures exclusively done for the Central Virginia Sport Performance community, and all the lectures performed at the Central Virginia Sport Performance Seminar make this an absolute must for performance coaches around the world. The world-class lectures at the Strength Coach Network are not all that you'll see as well. The discussion in the forums and the support and the career guidance from some of the top practitioners in the world, from people all over the world, makes this an absolute must and a great place for you to network, learn, and grow as a performance professional. So hop on over to strengthcoachnetwork.com and use the code CVASPS, that's C-V-A-S-P-S, to get your 48-hour trial for only a dollar. We're sure you're going to find great value in the Strength Coach Network and are really excited to have you involved. So hop on over to strengthcoachnetwork.com and use the code CVASPS to check it out today. Hey, what's happening, everybody? Jay DeMayo coming at you with this week's edition of My Thoughts Monday. And today, I actually want to talk a little bit about programming and some stuff that we're doing here uh, and kind of the directions that it came from. Um, you know, back in the not-so-distant past, we used to do a lot of things barefoot. Actually, we used to do everything here uh, training-wise with the athletes that I get to work with uh, in Vibram Five Fingers for, for quite a while. This was kind of like around the time Art Horn's book came out, The Barefoot in Boston. Um, you know, and, and we could talk about all the sciencey stuff and this, that, and the third later, but really what it came down to is I had a former student athlete come back from the NFL. He trained in them. Uh, said, you got some crazy results. I was like, cool. We tried out, and you know, we, we ended up seeing some really impressive strength gains just by having that be the only you know new change to the program. So we got into those, and, and we, we saw some things that were good um, when it came to training in, in minimalist footwear, as I think most people did if you did it in a controlled manner, you know, if you didn't go right in and 
start running 5Ks in them or whatever. And, um, and things were peachy and we were, we were seeing some really positive results with, with some things and, you know, some decreases in injury, uh, rates that, that were, were really cool. And then we started to get more into looking at things, uh, specifically performance wise and more specifically into more intensive jumping means. And, uh, won't hold a punch here. I, I got kind of scared and worried that we were looking at, at putting too much stress on them and that that was going to cause a problem in the footwear or being barefoot period with it. So we got away for, uh, from it for a while. Um, well, now we're, we're kind of working our way back to it and we're working our way back to it for a couple of reasons. One, um, is because we have a student athlete that we've been working with who has some, some, pretty impressive bunions that's the word um so bad to the point that one of them was you know needed surgery um so we 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 got that corrected and we noticed that there was a huge spill on his right foot it like turns way out when he when he accelerates so we, we went back and we were thinking about things that we uh looked at at the seminar this summer and specifically from chris corfus's talk talking about the big toe and, and all of those things so the first thing we did is we just started doing the warm-up barefoot, kind of going back to it. And we've seen some pretty good improvement in how this young man accelerates and how he sprints. He's still a bit of a hill striker. We, we still have a ways to go. It's only been a few weeks, to be frank. Um, but to the point that we we now have gone back to, to kind of starting over and peeling the you know things back a bit and going through the whole lift uh, barefoot at least twice a week, you know, with the one set protocol, you know, and, and you would think sort of that the, the idea of minimalist shoe wear and minimalist training would kind of fit together. But because of that fear with the extensive jumps, um, and then getting into the intensive jumps being barefoot, we, we didn't do it. Uh, but now we are, and we've kind of taken things a step back more and we're going to revisit the jump progression and, Kind of build it even from simpler and smaller to, to build into the more, I don't know, traditional, if you want to call it, extensive short coupling jumps. Um, but knock wood, we've been seeing things moving in a pretty positive direction. Well, I tell you all that to tell you this. Um, as we are in the middle of this, like, kind of middle of the year, um, conference season, learning season, if you may call it. It's a bunch of different symposiums and seminars. It just happened in the past couple weeks. There's a few more coming up, obviously, you know, like the NSCA Coaches Conference here in a few weeks. I think the one thing that I would say uh, as, a, as a person who's been in the middle of a lot of this for, for quite a while um, that I like from these things is that not so much the Monday morning information, you know, coming in and getting the one exercise or the one thing you can add to your program or the one thing that you can change, but more of the self-reflecting type information, the things that are going to make you go back and look at what you've done in the past and how you've built to where you are and how that's going to help you move forward and, and kind of make you revisit what you have done and you, you have been successful with or not successful with and, and kind of look at the whys and hows and wheres of what you were doing. And that's really what we've done. And, you know, we've gone back and, and now we've looked at Chris's talk a couple times and, you know, I, we're looking to add more and more of that, obviously kind of in a small addition per week basis because we don't want to just push this kid over the edge here. But um, going back and looking at, you know, why that was important, why those things we were doing in the past were important and why we we may have been having success, you know, and, and kind of layering that on top of what Chris is saying to kind of dig in and, and peel out what was great and what was not and where we can go has kind of brought us to this point. Um, so that would be, you know, really what I find to be the most important aspect of it is, yes, there are times where you're going to see a presentation or you are going to hear a person talk 
or you were going to watch or be involved in some sort of hands-on discussion where you're going to see something that's going to be thrown in your program right away. I understand that. You're going to see or hear or learn something that could flip you on your head and totally change your programming, like uh, progressing the jumping exercises from Dr. Verkashansky, or for so many people, the first time they hear Cal talk about triphasic, you know, things like that, that are going to really turn, change things, you know, actually looking at the force velocity curve and understanding why Dr. Mann is, is so into VBT and why it's so important and why we need to be able to understand those things, things like that, you know, like there are going to be things that do that, but even more so if you can look at those talks and look at how you've been training athletes in the past and see maybe where your stuff fit with it and have some self-reflection and really break down what you were doing versus what they were saying. Because maybe there are some things that you were doing in the past that for some reason, good, bad, or indifferent, you removed that you really should put back in. At least that's what we saw. And, you know, we're, we're toying around with it, looking at now this group is now four young student-athletes who all have their own different, uh, limitations, if you may, but obviously not one thing is going to be a cure-all for all, but one thing may help people in different ways. So the only way to figure that out, right, is to look at how they do things and add things and see how it goes. So we're going to continue to slowly progress with this and continue to slowly add with this and continue to reflect and look back at what Chris talked about um, and look back at what we did in the past and see how possibly we could do even better because I think we can. And I do think there's a lot of hints in the past. And I do think that a lot of those hints in the past, not just from the greats, the Bondarchuks, the Verkashanskis, you know, the Tudor Bombas, whatever it may be, not just that past, from your individual past that you had success with that maybe you look at through a slightly different light, but maybe you need to look at from a 10,000 foot view again to zone back in, to bring it back in. I just say that because that's what we're doing. And, you know, knock on wood, we're really hoping that this progresses and continues to progress. Uh, hopefully this can turn into some sort of like a My Thoughts Monday write-up or whatever day it would be, uh, like we did last year with that one team that I talked about. Uh, people seem to like that. So we will keep you up to date with how this progresses, but it's been a fun project and we're really excited about it. So yeah, we're, we're going to get rocking and rolling with that here in just an hour or so too. So as always, guys, thanks for listening and thanks for being part of what we do here at Central Virginia Sport Performance. We, be at, we will be back next week with another My Thoughts Monday. I'll see you then.